Hello YouTube family, this is Pamela. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video because I'm getting a lot of questions about what do I do when they are tiny eggs and then they start to move around and then what do I do with them? I mean, they're so fragile. Well, here's what I do. I started out with an even smaller, you can get these, these are like little cricket containers. You can get them at any pet store and they have a lid, see, right here, okay? So when they're going through their different stages, I have a tiny one, a bigger one, and a bigger one. And what I do is, as they're getting older, as they're starting to move around more, that's when I transfer them into one of these. Now today, I have, I wanna show you something, because this is what I find fascinating. These are all the exact same age. And um, again, when I make, when I create, or when I breed hornworms, they're for my own consumption. For my reptiles they're not to sell so on a larger scale I'm sure they do it completely different but these are the same age and if you look at this closely some of them grow faster than others we all know when you get a hornworm at a pet store they're gonna grow really fast but I'm talking about the very beginning stage when you're not even sure because it's a little tiny aqua blue egg and then it then advances to something that looks like an eyelash moving around and then it you know gets bigger and bigger and bigger I find the less you mess the better they do so this is a good example I've done very little for these guys to get going um, look at this little one here look how tiny this little one is the same age as this one and everybody has had access to food, but some of the eggs will actually emerge, or some of the eggs will actually grow f a little bit faster than, you know, than the others. And so they go through the stages a little bit faster. But here's what I basically do. I have about four different sizes of these little cricket boxes that you can get, like I said, at any pet store. And I use these and I still, when, I'm, when they're this little, I keep them in the contain in the unit that my bullfrog lives it's an absolute perfect 81 degrees somewhat tropical and i never have to mess with them so i don't have to worry we i seem to have it down to a science in my house but in your house you just have to kind of create what works for you so today i'm changing out the paper towel liner and now i'm going to add some food that I had in my refrigerator that I made earlier. Um, and I'm going to just transfer them very carefully into here. I'm gonna put the lid back on and then they're gonna go right back into the um, uh, unit that my bullfrog lives because she never goes near that corner. And it's, like I said, it's a perfect place for them until they can go into the, the bigger um, sterilite that I I keep them in and it's just a constant process of trying new things trying um, you know I even put in like this I cut this up it's just a plastic leaf and I find that it's safe they're not big enough to like chomp on it or anything and it's plastic but it mimics it mimics what they normally would climb on and they're drawn to it so like I said I keep it real simple. I put some food in different places all along the, the edge here. I set them back in. I put the lid on and they go right back into the unit that works the best for me. You can have your own set of circumstances and you can just try to figure out how to um, create um, about 80 degrees and maybe 50% humidity, but you can play with the humidity too. So. I get a lot of questions like that, like uh, if they never lived or they all died. There are times when I know that this, this group here, as healthy as they are, okay, um, those, are, those are from my actual batch. These weren't ones that I purchased. So this actual batch, I'll probably lose a certain percentage of them for absolutely no reason. They will have perfect temperature they will have perfect um, food they'll have everything they need it's just the way it is you know they produce thousands of eggs or hundreds of eggs depending on how many moths you have flying around in, in their unit but um, 
sometimes they don't make it and don't blame yourself just do the best you can and never give up never 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 stop trying because when you do get it down to a science it's just a really cool feeling so don't give up please don't give up um, you can do this you really can if it was that difficult I probably would have lost interest but I find it really stimulating really fun and uh, it's good to know that you can do something if these were never available. You know, I used to buy butterworms, but you can't even buy butterworms anymore. They're produced out of the country and they do radiate them so they don't, so that you can't produce more when they come into the United States. You can't even find anyone selling them right now due to everything else going on. But it's nice to know that you can breed if you need to. And that's really why I do what I do. So if you like this video or if you like any of my videos, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the thumbs up or subscribe and let's continue to have some fun, okay? I do have other things going on as well. I have a beautiful veiled chameleon I want you to meet and I, you've already met my, uh, my bullfrog. I've got a lot of other things going on and I want to in introduce you to their lives as well. So. Thank you for watching my channel. I don't take you for granted, and I really, really appreciate your subscribing to me. Have a blessed day. Remember, God is great. And if you have any questions, I am trying super hard, and I think I've been fairly successful at getting back to each one of you. So have a blessed day. Take care of yourself. Keep your chin up, and I'm here if you need me. Take care.